Mm, that's drunk. Hi there, previously I've done videos on games released on both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis that I thought were better on Genesis, but let's flip it around and look at some games that you're better off playing on the SNES instead of Sega. Again, I have to say my usual disclaimer that I'm not going to include games like Earthworm Jim, Aladdin, Zombies at My Neighbors, or Shadowrun because you can't go wrong on either system with any of those games. Let's start with Sunset Riders. Right off the bat, you can see the Super Nintendo port has four playable characters. The Genesis port only has two. Kind of a big deal, since each character has a different weapon, so it's nice to have that opportunity to find a character who fits the way you play. And that's important because Sunset Riders is a pretty tough game on both consoles. In particular, however, the Sega port is just absolutely brutal. The balance of speed feels off. In past videos, you've heard me prattle on about how certain games are faster and more intense on the Genesis, but here it backfires. Sunset Riders on Sega is borderline unfair to play, while on the SNES it's challenging, but it's still an accessible game. And don't give me that get good crap or whatever the hell, the principle of the matter is, what incentive do I have to play a port as imbalanced as this when the SNES port is sitting right there? I won't go into the differences in terms of how the Genesis port has a different level structure, because ultimately that's not that big of a deal, but what is a big deal is how each port is balanced in terms of speed and difficulty, and the SNES port wins that battle hands down. Next there's Smash TV, and this is an easy one. On the Super Nintendo, the controller lends itself perfectly to the gameplay. The arcade version uses two joysticks to dictate the action, one to move and one to aim and fire. The SNES controller only has one D-pad, but the four buttons function as a kind of makeshift D-pad, so it captures the simplicity of the arcade game's controls perfectly. The Genesis port simply can't replicate this, not even with the six-button controller. In that version, it's the D-pad to move, one button to shoot forward, and one to shoot in the opposite direction, and one to lock your character in place. Why settle for that? Smash TV is just so much more player friendly on the Super Nintendo without a doubt. Let's tackle a couple racing games, starting with Rock and Roll Racing. Now I'll give the Sega version points here for having a wider viewpoint so you can see more of the track as you're racing, but I mean, the game is called Rock and Roll Racing. A big part of the fun is the sound design, not just with the soundtrack obviously, but the sound effects when you destroy another car, as well as the announcer. In the Genesis game, not only does the music struggle to represent the songs they're supposed to be, but the music pauses anytime the announcer says anything. First. That really gets old after a while. The sound effects also aren't up to par either. The SNES game kills it. The songs sound fantastic, everything is layered so there's no interruptions, and the sound effects of all the destruction really add to the experience. No doubt about this one, give me rock and roll racing on the Super Nintendo any day of the week. And then we've got Street Racer. This is kind of an interesting one, since the implementation of the core racing mechanics here are reliant on the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 rotation capabilities, no different than Super Mario Kart. The Sega Genesis obviously can't do that, so instead they just made the game more of a straight-ahead arcade racer instead of a kart racer, and as a result, it's really boring and really easy and just kind of a generic. It robs a lot of what makes Street Racer a fun game. Street Racer on Super Nintendo nails the kart racing feel while giving the player a truly fantastic visual presentation with the layered, scrolling backgrounds, and the sprite work in some of the attacks. This is an underappreciated kart racing game, and if you play it today, on a 16-bit system anyway, make sure it's on the Super Nintendo. Batman Returns is another one where you're better off with the SNES. The Genesis game looks and sounds and plays like a generic movie cash-in. It's an action platformer where the graphics are dark and bleary, and the music is utterly generic. The gameplay here is as boring as it gets, and it can feel like work to get through at times. The Super Nintendo game is a fast-paced beat-em-up with huge detailed sprites, awesome sound design, and some variety in the gameplay with these driving stages. Even if you're not keen on beat-em-ups, this one is fantastic just for the amount of destruction you can cause not just on your enemies, but in property damage in the background. I get that the Genesis game is its own thing, but its own thing kinda sucks, and I'd consider it a stay away. If you wanna play as Batman just to let off some steam and kick some ass, go with the SNES game. Next there's Saturday Night Slam Masters. This is a good game on both systems, but this is just more of a public service announcement because the Genesis version only has single player and a versus mode, while the Super Nintendo version has multiplayer co-op as well as a two-on-two -two versus mode that can support up to four players. I'm not exactly the most social guy in the world, but if I want to play an SNES game with other people that has zero learning curve that anyone can get into, one of my go-to games is Saturday Night Slam Masters because of the four-player functionality. It's fantastic and it represents all the over-the-top absurd of pro wrestling perfectly. The Genesis game, while a good game on its own, just doesn't have that functionality, so go with the SNES game here, it's a good time. 
We'll finish up here with two fighting games, the first being Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, and this is another easy one. The Super Nintendo game is intuitive, with quick responsive controls. It's just a well-made 16-bit fighting game, and one of the better fighting games of the era. It's pretty easy to learn all the moves, and there's an interesting collection of fighters here, including Shredder, which is nice. The Genesis version is just... good god, I mean, this is one of the worst Genesis games I've ever played. The controls are a complete mess, and the game is absolutely impossible in single-player mode. Casey Jones, in particular, is absurdly overpowered in this game. The Super Nintendo game is much more player friendly, with the controls having a lot more functionality, an easier learning curve, and again, it's pretty cool to have Shredder as a playable character. Last, there's Mortal Kombat 2. The first game was better on Genesis since it had the fatalities and more responsive controls, but I have to ask, if you're gonna play a Mortal Kombat game today, why wouldn't it be Mortal Kombat 2? It's a great true sequel that takes everything the first game did from the lore to the gore, and you're probably better off experiencing it on the Super Nintendo over the Sega Genesis. Mortal Kombat 2 is all about atmosphere, and it simply looks better on the SNES, especially the backgrounds. The music and sound effects also have a certain depth to them that's lacking on the Genesis. Yes, both games are insane insanely difficult in single player mode, but like I said, these games are all about the visuals, sound, and atmosphere. And, you know, turning into a dragon and eating someone's torso. And if you're gonna turn into a dragon and eat someone's torso, you want it to look nice, right? And it looks best on the SNES, so play that version instead. Alright, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.